or Rebecca from Chemnitz. In today's episode of Dye Pop Weekly, we added some dry acid dye powder to five different fiber types of yarn um, just to see if we get something that looks like the dry tulip powder techniques that I like to use. And this is what's left behind when I went and put the yarn in the steamer basket. So let's clean up. <laughs> this is a skein of Knit Picks Stroll um, DK yarn and I'm going to use this to sort of wipe up all of this excess color. Um, I'm going to be using different parts of the skein, flipping it around to get reasonable coverage, but this is a leave no dye behind type situation. I did not pre-soak this yarn at all. Um, I just dipped this actually into the same uh, pre-soak bath for less than a minute where the yarn for today's video had been. So this doesn't quite count as a dry rub because um, the yarn is wet, but the concept is similar. I am laying it out and literally rubbing up this color that has been left behind. Um, and I think that we're getting some really, really gorgeous, gorgeous tones on our yarn. The colors are a bit more spread out. They're not like splotchy or anything, um, especially because, you know, they aren't going to set immediately. Um, but, oh man, I think, you know, I think that, you know, I, I, I don't recommend sprinkling dye on the counter just to get this sort of technique, but we're getting something really, really lovely here. Yeah, and this sort of just shows that uh, when you can get something absolutely stunning and very, very much one of a kind when you have all of this leftover color. And like even on my tongs, um, I could go in, I could go into the die cups back there where I had placed some of the powders. Um, I'm not sure if I entirely want to do that because I think that that could give some more concentrated tones, especially like some of the, the pinks and stuff. But, I mean, this is just really pretty. And man, I should maybe forget the, the tablet and try something like this more often, this like wet rub. Now clearly, as I move this, you can see that not all of the color is just sticking in the yarn. We're wiping some up, but as I move it, I am leaving some color behind. So this is not a perfect um, technique by any stretch, but there's no reason why you need to use a paper towel um, because we can get something really unique and quite lovely um, and fairly saturated with just what we have around us. I will definitely be cleaning up more with some paper towels. Um, I'm going to likely just go ahead and rinse these cups out directly, but I thought that this would be a fun little bonus video. So when the dye pot itself clears up, I will come back and we will then go ahead and steam this beautiful 100% superwash merino yarn. The leftover dye colors when I put water in the cup were so beautiful that I needed to do something. So I took, this is just some dry stroll fingering weight yarn, and I am going to just slowly soak up the color from each of these cups. Um, typically, oh, this is a yarn that is reasonably uh, absorbent, which is why I picked it, but of course we're not going in, there we go, although I'm making a little bit of a mess. Um, I did put down some plastic wrap. Oh shoot, there's no vinegar in here. <sighs> oh, I did not think this through. I was like, oh I should just dip this dry into the different colors. Um, 
I'm really liking that color, but I did not think this through. I need to go ahead and add a little bit of vinegar to each of these cups. All right, let's try, sort of dip into the cup. I'm not sure how much of the liquid we'll be able to absorb. Uh, there might be way too much liquid around here, but there we go. And some of the color will probably stick. What's interesting is that the color has already sort of shifted. Um, which is pretty cool. There we go. We're starting to like soak up some of this color. I'm hoping to get something that feels a little hand painted with like sections of white and then sections of these colors, but we'll see. We'll see how well I do. Okay, that is that section. Kind of leaving that in there for now. Let's take another section and try to sort of start to go into this purple. And then we will take this final section for, towards this pink which of course I am um, spilling out, but we'll let it sort of like slowly, slowly add a little more and a little more until we can soak it up. I really enjoy making things up as I go along. Yeah, I'm making a little bit of a mess. Uh, but I think that we could get something really, really cool out of this, so I am going to keep going for it. Okay, so we're getting, oh yeah, we're soaking up this purple. Come on, a little more yarn for the color. Eventually, my plan is to sort of like get as much as I can and then wrap this up in plastic wrap and steam it. But I don't think I can steam this at the same time as the other one that I did. Um, so I guess I can move these a little closer together and add a little more like, color. I mean, this is feeling like really, really fun. <laughs> I have no idea how much, I mean that color is starting to look clear. I have no idea how much of the color, um, well that's starting to look clear as well. I have no idea how much color will absorb to the yarn now versus like will require heat, but I think that we could get something that looks really, really cool and this plastic wrap I put out might not be super helpful, but honestly, if these runoffs are looking clear, which they are, I might not need the plastic wrap. I can probably just plop this into a steamer basket. But I'm still going to want to wait until after I have done the, the other skein. Alright, let's go and steam this guy in our steamer basket. And I am going to go ahead and steam this yarn for 20 minutes. The 20 minutes are up, and I am now going to remove this yarn and set it aside so it can cool. I had initially planned to steam this other skein of yarn that we're playing with, but we've got some leftover color down here. So maybe we should try to take advantage of it. It has been about 20 minutes, and actually almost all of this yarn is pretty wet. Um, there is some there's some drips coming off right now, but those are actually really clear. Um, I just sort of want to show 
where this yarn is at right now. So if we were gonna go and just steam it right now, we'd have these really cool sections of color. However, I want to go plop this in that pot. There's no vinegar in the pot right now, but there's vinegar in here. So let's go see what will happen. This dye pot is warm. Um, it is not hot. Um, our yarn is drippy and I have it positioned with the white sections on the bottom and the colored sections on top. And so, curious, I'm just gonna slowly sort of add these drier sections down. Oh, that's actually not super, super hot. Um, I'm eventually gonna add it all. I just figured, why not start with those sections? Um, and actually, let's rotate this around. Um, actually, we're soaking up almost all of that color um, just right now, which is kind of cool. There's still definitely some white sections behind. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add all of this right now, but I am, goodness, I guess I need to add a little more water to this. And in keeping with our leftover theme, I'm gonna be adding some of the water plus vinegar that was used in the original pre-soak. And I do want to apply some heat. Um, so I turn the heat back, the water back on. It's cold right now. I am going to heat this up until it starts to bubble and then turn off the heat. Six minutes in and we're starting to see some bubbles. I'm gonna reduce the heat and give this an additional five minutes with the heat on. It's been five minutes, and those colors from those cups, those struck pretty quickly without heat, because I don't think they spread much. But I am going to, I just turned off the heat, I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool in the pot for a little while, then we'll take it out and wash our yarn. The yarn has not completely cooled, but I still want to remove it from the dye pot. Trying to move my tongs over to get a reasonable grip. Um, I do see some nice pastel pinks around that pink, but I'm really excited to see what this yarn will look like um, in the end. And when we dipped into the leftover dye that was in this pot, how much color. But for now, I am going to set this aside. And once it's cool, we'll come back and wash it. Here is the swish 100% superwash merino yarn that we wiped up off of our counter. And looks like all of that color is in our yarn. Um, we've got some beautiful tones. Um, it's truly a very random dye job. I actually see a lot of pale gray. I'm curious if that'll look a little more white when it dries. but. I'm gonna add some clear dish soap. What? I almost broke one of my rules. Uh-oh. There. I'm keeping a good handle on the yarn so that way I do not tangle it. Um, but, yeah, that water is clear. So I am going to rinse out the soap, hang this up to dry, and start washing our other yarn. Here is our sock yarn that is kind of hand painted. Actually, we got some reasonable coverage of those blues. I'm curious, um, I mean, some of the places it's paler. So I'm curious about whether this yarn will feel balanced or not. But once it's dry, we will take a closer look. Um, or actually, maybe we should restain this yarn just to see how balanced it is. Um, but all of that color is in the yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, you know, some, a little bit of clear dish soap like I did with the last one. Rinse it all out and hang the yarn up to dry. We used our leftover dye to create two extremely different skeins of yarn. Um, I very easily could have wiped up the dye that was left on the counter with a paper towel. 
but instead I wet some of this Knit Pick Swish DK yarn in some water with vinegar and then use that to wipe up the counter. And so we've got this subtle yet speckled yarn with a lot of sort of blue and purple hues over it. There was some dye powder left in some cups and I didn't want to let that go either. I added some water to the cups and then placed the corners in three places, one, two, and three, um, to let that soak up the leftover jacquard acid dye mixtures. I then had some leftover dye in my steam basket and I sort of folded it again um, to keep the colors that I had just added out and to dip in, I guess with these bottom three spots, into that final color. The coverage is not necessarily 100% in these spots. Um, there's more color in some sections and less than in others. Um, but overall, I think that this is a really beautiful repeating colorway. What I don't know is whether um, these intermediate portions sort of all correspond to like the same part of the yarn or um, if it will end up feeling almost like a little bit of a gradient. Um, that level of balance is something that you would see when you knit it, um, which is why I guess I would call this one um, semi-repeating uh, because, um, you know, there is pink throughout, but the sections are different sizes and etc. So it's not a sharply repeating colorway where you could do some planned pooling, but you could still get something extremely stunning out of this yarn. If you would like to learn a little more about the Knit Picks Swish DK and Stroll yarn bases, I have some affiliate links um, to the Bear Yarn in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching yet another episode of Leave No Dye Left Behind, where I am trying to create colorways on the fly with dye that might otherwise be wiped up and poured down the drain or go into the trash. And I think that this video really shows that you can create some absolutely stunning colors. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and make sure that you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. If you are already a subscriber, really appreciate my approach and would like to support us on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreon is a platform where um, fans can support the creators that they enjoy and in exchange get some really cool perks that include behind the scenes sneak peeks, early access to new dyeing videos, and more. You can find a link both in the video description and the iCard. Thank you so much for watching.